Ah, oh, Joanne, finally, you wake. You've been asleep for quite some time. Since then, Tears of the Kingdom has been released. Take it. It will help you after your long slumber. It has finally been released. After waiting four years after this game was first announced, Tears of the Kingdom is finally out. And I don't know how they managed to pull it off, but somehow they made the sequel to Breath of the Wild already one of the best games of all time, even better. I've been playing this game non-stop for the last couple of weeks. Even though this game had the same messy development cycle as Breath of the Wild had, and since it was used the same engine and the same world as Breath of the Wild, Paired with the fact that the trailer showed nothing, people were concerned that Tears of the Kingdom would feel too much like Breath of the Wild DLC. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Me personally, I hope that Tears of the Kingdom would be more than just Breath of the Wild, but oh, there are floating islands now, and that's it. But after all this time waiting, with the Switch basically close to its deathbed at this point, this game came out, and I don't know how they did it, but they made Breath of the Wild an already phenomenal game even better by not only adding floating islands in the sky, but adding a whole nother world beneath Hyrule. But first, let's discuss that piece. So Zelda and Link explore a cave, find Ganondorf's rotten body, Zelda disappears and Link has a new arm and okay, cool. But after you leave the first cave, you realize that you're in the sky. You dive down, find the equivalent to the Great Plateau, but they somehow make it better. Even though this is basically the tutorial area, it is probably the best sky island in the game. Probably because the sky just contains some islands with chests on it or some other fun puzzle. None of them are really as big as the Great Sky Island. Yeah, the puzzles are great on these islands and they're convenient to reach some areas quick by just jumping off the platform. But none had the same feeling of exploration than the first island. Okay, and after we get all the shrines and all the abilities, which are great by the way, I will get back to those later, we get to go to the Kingdom of Hyrule. It's the same map as in Breath of the Wild, but now the world is a lot more... How do I say this? Alive? There are so much more areas with actual people walking around, which it makes sense why that wasn't the case in Breath of the Wild, because there was an apocalypse happening, and here... It's all about rebuilding Hyrule, and the world feels so much more alive because of that. This guy with the sign has to be my favorite though. He is all over the place and you gotta make a construction to keep his sign he is holding from falling down. And in some cases, you can get really creative. There's still one area in the game that we didn't discuss, and Nintendo didn't really talk about this. They maybe showed it in one or two trailers. Of course, it is the depths. This is basically a full new map, and it's extremely dark, and there is something called gloom spread everywhere. It's sort of the equivalent to Malice from Breath of the Wild, but if you touch this stuff, your total hearts will be depleted. Now, in the overworld, it's not really a threat, since it will replenish pretty quickly, but in the depths, it will not. You can replenish your hearts by going to these light routes, which will light up the area so you can actually see something. These are always right underneath shrines above, which is really cool. Sometimes I have found a light route, but not the shrine it's connected to. So I will actually find shrines because of the light routes. Now we have touched on the world, let's go over to the abilities. And oh my god, they are amazing. Let's start off with the meatiest of them all, Ultra Hand, letting you able to pick up all sorts of things and stick them to other sorts of things. This one has to be my favorite of all of them. I've seen a lot of cool stuff being built by only the Ultra Hand and I've put hours into trying to make my own stuff but I, I always suck at it. This is of course heavily inspired by Magnesis in Breath of the Wild, though that only works on metal things and this works on basically anything you can imagine. My second favorite probably has to be Fuse. You can make the weirdest weapon you can never imagine, like a super long spear or, or, or bookshelf hammer, what? 
Or what about the fabled meat arrow? Basically, you can put anything on your sword, shield or your arrows. It's a really fun ability to mess with and can be incredibly helpful in some situations. Want to get somewhere high? Just attach a rocket or a bomb to your shield and soar up into the sky. Next up, we have Recall, letting you rewind time on mostly anything except enemies. Really similar to Stasis and Breath of the Wild, but instead of freezing time, it will rewind time. Really handy when my stupid creations fall down to the ground or something. And then there is Ascend. Inspired by the devs cheating around in the world and thinking, hey, this may be a good ability to put in the game. Which is basically what most of these abilities are. They allow you to break the game so much which was actually intentional. But yeah, this ability shoots you through any flat surface. So if you ever get lost in a cave, well, just shoot up with Ascend. So besides Amiibo, Camera and Map, which for some reason is an ability, there is one more ability that Nintendo didn't show at all and we didn't really know existed. If you don't want to get spoiled by what it is and just want to find it in the game, I'd recommend you skip to this timestamp right here to just skip this segment. So the only ability Nintendo didn't touch on at all in any trailer is auto build. The funny thing is you're supposed to meet Joshua and let her give you a quest to get it but I found it on my own and I felt like the smartest person alive. With this it will allow you to rebuild anything you have already created instantly. You don't even have to have the materials you need you can just use Zonite which um yeah Zonite. Zonite is this new material as sort of a currency for Zonite crystals, which you need to trade in to fill up your Zonite charges. These allow you to use Zonite devices and can be all sorts of crazy stuff. Wheels, fans, rockets, heck, even flamethrowers, which is something I would never expect to see in a Zelda game. But damn, here we are. With these Zonite devices, you can make the craziest stuff, like, um, like, like this. This might objectively be the best game I have ever played. Like, they even fixed little complaints I had about Breath of the Wild. First off, weapon durability is it improved at all, but I don't mind it that much anymore to be honest. The thing I do dislike is because of the upheaval, as it's called, all weapons are decayed, which basically means that, yeah, they are useless. But you can still find regular weapons at these ghostly statues underground. I mean, it makes sense. The developers just want you to experiment with fuse, so that's why they made all the weapons worse. So you can make them better with the fuse ability. Also, rain. It is the same, but there is a new effect that can be made by cooking called slip resistant. And oh my god, this might have been their best improvement. There is even anti-slip clothing, so you don't have to worry about the rain at all anymore. So basically all the little things that kept Breath of the Wild from being the best game ever, Tears of the Kingdom improved on. I can go on and on about how amazing this game is, but I wanted to keep it spoiler free for now because the game just came out a couple of months ago and I really didn't beat it myself yet, so... Yeah... I can guarantee that this will not be the last time that I talk about this game, just because in the gaming space as a whole, this game is huge. And even about a small game like Splatoon 3, I already did multiple videos on that, so expect more Tears of the Kingdom stuff. Well, anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.